Now, what kind of civilization we're going to have going forward? Is it going to be one where everyone's uploaded and perfectly happy, or are we not going to upload, or are biological humans going to be in charge, or are you know, these vast intelligent entities going to be in charge? You know, there are a variety of discussions about that, and I don't know which ones of those turns out to be true. I do know that we have a lot of people who want things to work out well for people. So right now, I'm betting that whatever occurs is going to be viewed as a pretty good thing by a lot of people, because if it's not viewed as a pretty good thing by a lot of people, there'll be a lot of people kicking and screaming real hard to avoid the future that they don't like. So my betting right now is we'll probably get something that looks pretty good to most folk. And I think what looks pretty good to most folk is we still have people, and people are still in charge, even if we have these vastly intelligent entities which are making things work. Now, is that going to be the way it works out? We can have a long discussion, and there are many viewpoints. Do I want to have the chance to find out? Yes. Do I want to participate in that discussion and possibly in the process of making that world? Yes. Do I want to be cryopreserved? Not really, but given the alternatives, I'd much prefer that to the, you know, the other options. So that's pretty much the answer I'd give. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ralph uh, mentioned uh, that uh, Cracking occurs if you cool down a liquid nitrogen temperature. That's certainly true. He mentioned that uh, mature nanotechnology uh, will be able to uh, fix that kind of damage. That's probably true as well. But I want to come out for the question was raised about what temperature you want to be stored at, and I want to come out in favor of the anti-cracking uh, mm. people, the anti-cracking faction. And um, <laughs> we know today that if you store at a higher temperature than liquid nitrogen, somewhere above uh, the glass transition temperature, uh, there will be less cracking than if you go down a liquid, liquid nitrogen temperature. <clears throat> There will probably be some cracking, but there is research that can be done, which will be done, called the annealing research, which will eventually enable us to come up with a technology which will pretty much eliminate cracking. And um, so uh, there are some potential disadvantages of storage at a higher temperature than liquid nitrogen. Uh, it is a, uh, uh, a new technology. It has not been really implemented uh, for people who choose cryonics. Uh, it will be more expensive than liquid nitrogen storage. Definitely. And it may be more risky, although I think that remains to be seen. Uh, but uh, I am all in favor of minimizing damage in every way possible and leaving the task of the future, the magnificent technology of the future, uh, putting less uh, stress on these people and making it, uh, and also the less damage there is, uh, the greater likelihood that not only that you will be revived, but that you will be revived earlier rather than later. And the longer you, may, you remain in cryopreservation, uh, the greater your risks of never being revived because something might happen to you in that state. Um, and I also want to point out something that Ralph did point out, but I think it's particularly important uh, for people who are thinking of, be, of signing up for cryonics or have already signed up, uh, unless you're on death's doorstep, the likelihood is you may live for quite a few number of years. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, people who were fairly advanced in age said they expected to live 60 more years or so. Uh, uh, the point is that whatever today's technology is, if you need uh, cryonics, in the future, particularly 10, 20, 30 years into the future, the odds are it's going to cause much less damage to your body 
which will increase your odds of revival sooner rather than later. Yep. So let me ask a question here before we go on. How many of you, uh, it's going to cost more, maybe it's a little less reliable, the, the, the thermostat control mechanism does have some failure modes, liquid nitrogen doesn't. Uh, how many of you, suppose it costs double what, what the current rates are, how many of you would say, yeah, I'd prefer intermediate temperature storage over liquid nitrogen and I'm willing to pay for it? How many? Hands. Ah, fair number of folk. Okay. So there's a lot of interest in this. Um, you know, we'll move forward as effectively as we can. We have a question at the table here. Actually, our reporter. Oh. Uh, two questions. How much does this cost? And mm -hmm. what are you doing to, um, let's say this works, someone comes out of it in 100 or 200 years, but legally they're dead, they've been dead, so legally they've ceased to be a person, their assets have been distributed, their skill sets are obsolete, so they'll be starting from square one again, what kind yeah. of, of legal mechanism are you guys working with to ensure that that person can then become a viable part of society right. as opposed to a drain on it once they're revived? Okay, so basically when someone is revived, uh, there, there are a couple of issues floating around. First off is when you wake up, there it is, 100 years from now, whatever the future technology is, certainly you have at least the skills and training of a baby. And assuming that babies continue to flourish in the future, and are able to cope with society, then hopefully we can too. Uh, secondly, the question is, what about assets? Can we preserve some assets? And indeed, there, uh, there are some folks in this room who have set up wealth preservation trusts, and indeed Alcor is working to set up a template trust so that people who are interested in having some assets when they wake up have a mechanism by which to carry out this desire so they can wake up with, you know, some money. Uh, so that not only will you wake up in a future with advanced technology where uh, amazing things are happening, you'll also have some cash in the bank so you can do something. Uh, and of course, that's above and beyond Alcor's responsibilities. If you do look, you find that Alcor says, we will do our best to reintegrate you into society in the future as part of the, the whole process of cryopreservation. Hmm? The co oh, yeah. Uh, 80K neuro, 150K whole body, probably going to go up. Uh, but that's, those are the current prices. Yeah, just a, a quick technical point, uh, Ralph. Uh, when you uh, asked the question about the, ch the choice between the two options and mm -hmm. said that the uh, high temperature option would have more failure modes and so forth, I just want to make it clear that the way the high temperature option has been designed and structured, uh, it's a purely passive, uh, almost purely passive, uh, except for an electrical heater, which is all solid state. And if that fails in either direction, either too much heat or too little heat, uh, it's, it's engineered so you will not get too warm, you can't get too warm. And uh, if you fail cold, it's sort of like your first option. So it's right. not a horrendous you know, disadvantage yeah. from what we can see. The risk does in, not in look like as high, obviously, when we're looking at the design of these systems. And believe me, there's been a lot of thought about how to design such a system for quite a while now. When we're looking at the design of these systems, there's a lot of thought and a lot of care given uh, to, the, to the reliability of the system to make sure that, in fact, it will function. It's very hard to beat liquid nitrogen in terms of reliability, but if the, the risk of liquid nitrogen is way down here, and the risk of you know, whatever system we develop is substantially higher than liquid nitrogen, it's still pretty small, I think, is the, the point you're making.